Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. I'm going to ask for a favor. I need everybody to, to think for a minute. What are some of the most well-known and most often quoted verses of Torah? If you have one, say it really loudly so we can hear it. A little bit louder than that. Justice, justice to, shall you pursue. Tzedek, tzedek, tear do. Thank you, Justin. What else? Bereshit, bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim vet God made the heavens and the earth. Thank you, Nate. So often among these is the two we mentioned, love your neighbor as yourself, there's a few other really good quotable pieces of Torah. It's a good book. I, I recommend a good read. So the first one that was shared, thank you to Justin, is often Tzedek Tzedek Tir Dof. It's often quoted when we talk about Torah, and particularly within liberal Jewish communities, when it talks about, when we talk about Tikkun Olam, repair of the world. But often we also debate what exactly this means. Why do we repeat the word Tzedek? twice? Why is justice said two times and not one? Is it simply added for emphasis or is there a different meaning? What does justice mean? How do we pursue it? And who does the justice? Is this something that's meant only for judges or is it aimed at all of us? As I said, we use this phrase often in talking about tikkun olam, the work of repairing the world. And sometimes we even use it in a vacuum to speak about all things justice related writ large. But Sedek Sedek Tir Dov is actually more than just a catchphrase. It's a directive that I believe has far reaching wisdom to teach us about governance and about power structures. In this week's Torah portion, the very beginning reads, you shall appoint magistrates and officials for your tribes in all the settlements that Adonai your God is giving you and they shall govern the people with due justice. You shall not judge unfairly. You shall show no partiality. You shall take no bribes, for bribes blind the eyes of the discerning and upset the plea of the just. Justice, justice shall you pursue, that you may thrive and inhabit the land that Adonai your God is giving you. You see, context matters. Without context, we lack the specifics, and the specifics here are important. Justice is not just about fixing the world. And justice is also not simply setting up a system of governance that includes magistrates and officials and courts and judges, though that's certainly part of it. Judges is about what it, justice is about what it means for real people to occupy positions of power and authority and wield it with an eye toward impartiality and equality. And here in this Torah portion, Justice is also deeply rooted in what it means to inhabit the land. Justice, justice shall you pursue, that you may thrive and inhabit the land that Adonai your God has given you. Our tradition tells us time and time again that part of what it means to inhabit the land is to use power justly, to appoint and elect leaders and justices of high moral character to ensure that those in power will not use it for personal gain. Since the exodus from Egypt, we have been on this journey with the Israelites as they wander through the desert for 40 years. After 400 years of slavery, they have to figure out what it means for them to be a free people. How do they use that freedom equitably and unselfishly? How do they not become the very people and the very society that abuse them? How will they create a new society in a new land with new rules to govern how we live together? So we know what justice isn't, but what is it? What does it look like? Ibn Ezra, who's a medieval commentator, tells us that justice appears twice in our text to remind us that we are to pursue justice, whether it be to one's gain or to one's loss. Soforno, another slightly later medieval commentator, teaches that the directive of justice has to do with appointing judges. We're actually only supposed to select those who are already known for their sense of fair play and righteousness. And the Talmud shares a metaphor. And it says that one mention of justice is stated with regard to judgment, and one with regards to compromise. How so? 
There are two boats traveling on the river and they encounter each other. If both of them attempt to pass, both of them sink. As the river is not wide enough for both to pass, if they pass one after the other, both of them pass. And similarly, where there are two camels who ascend to the ascent of Beit Haron, where there is a narrow steep path and they encounter each other, if both of them attempt to ascend simultaneously, both of them fall. If they ascend one after the other, both of them ascend. So what do we learn from these? Well, first we learn that justice must be pursued regardless of whether it benefits us. If we see an injustice, we're obligated to do something to address it. Second, the character of the people in positions of power matters greatly. If we are to govern responsibly, it's our responsibility to appoint and elect people that are upstanding citizens, good, decent people who are known in our communities to be fair and righteous outside of seeking office. And third, living together requires compromise. And justice is intrinsically tied to our ability to seek compromise. If we think that our issues are the only ones that matter, then we will be the same as the two boats who can't pass and the same as the camels who fall. We have to recognize that sometimes stepping back is perhaps even more important than stepping forward. Holding and using power fairly is no easy task. And yet the Torah tells us that our sense of justice is deeply entwined with our ability to thrive in the land. In fact, the Talmud affirms this, reminding us that it wasn't the Babylonians or the Romans who were responsible for the destruction of our temples and the diasporas. No, it was us. It was our sin of sinat chinam, of baseless hatred toward each other that caused the diaspora and our eviction from the land. The diasporas were a result of our inability to treat one another with kindness, with respect, and with a sense of fairness and fair play. 36 times more than any other phrase in the Torah, we're reminded that we were once strangers in the land of Egypt. But it's more than a reminder. It's an ethical imperative. We know what it's like to be strangers in a foreign land. We know what it's like to be without power and with autonomy. We're reminded 36 times that we must remember where we came from and create new ways of living together that don't rely on subjugation and inequity. These are challenging questions with even more endlessly complex and challenging answers. But our text is clear. If we are to thrive and inhabit the land, we are given instructions on how we should do it, how to govern it, how to live in it, who we should put in power, how we should hold that power in a just and ethical way. Sedek, Sedek, Tir Dov. This week, we are given an opportunity to think about what it means to pursue justice justly. Shabbat Shalom.